If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. So yeah, um, this is my first time here, so I just want to say it's cool that this exists. Thank you for the people that, you know, this event and then also this space. So that's just, it's cool that we have an embassy somewhere around here and, and it's good. So Duke Lita, that's me, that's my name. Um, I started in Bitcoin in 2011, so I kind of started early, started mining in 2011 with CPUs and GPUs when you can still do that. So that's kind of how long I've been involved, I guess, but I've been involved in open source software for like 23 years now, so way before Bitcoin I was doing stuff with Linux and Git and Firefox, so yeah, like a lot of people are solely interested in getting rich with Bitcoin or whatever, and there's this really shitty part of the industry. And I'm just, I hate that part of the industry. I'm kind of bored with that. And so I'm really interested in the tech, and so I guess what I want to talk about today is the technology. So like, I'm a huge nerd, and so you start with Bitcoin, BTC. I know, I don't want to start any holy wars about the difference between what's the which is the real Bitcoin or whatever, right? But like in 2009, Satoshi came up with some C++ source code that was Bitcoin. There's nothing else. 2009, right? Like before that is like prehistory, right? Like most people don't know even where Bitcoin came from. It was kind of like immaculate conception in a lot of people's minds, but there was like a lot of work from the, from the 70s, like from the 1970s to the 90s, a huge amount of math was created, invented, made public, and Bitcoin needed all of that to exist. So it kind of came into existence when all the tech for it was known. So you got like public key cryptography and uh, proof of work and things like that, and then and lower level math stuff. So I don't know, I just want to like, I'm going to start at Bitcoin in 2009, but like there's cool prehistory to that, you know? Is Bitcoin a privacy coin? What the fuck does privacy coin mean? Is there even privacy possible on the internet? Question's still out on that, right? But when the web was started in like 94, we only had HTTP. We didn't even have the little green lock. You couldn't really give your credit card number to a company over the internet and feel even vaguely safe. So like, we've made a lot of progress. Bitcoin, to me, I consider Bitcoin HTTP. That's how important it is, and that's what layer of the stack it is. It's like, it's like a web, it's like, it's like Google.com getting invented, but HTTP Google, like not the SSL, not the little green lock. You can't really talk to it and be encrypted and only that website know. So I don't know, that's how I think about Bitcoin as kind of the beginning of this tech and privacy coins are like the green lock or you can call HTTPS or SSL or TLS and you know, everyone has a different name for it now. But I call it the green lock, you know, shitty green lock, but, or a lock. <laughs> so privacy coins are the lock on top of Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is a protocol just like TCP IP or the internet was invented in, you know, the 60s. TCPIP was a protocol that allowed the internet to exist and is essentially the same thing as the internet. Bitcoin is a protocol. Don't think of it as just one thing or one network. The Bitcoin maximalist, which I am not, would love you to think that it's just one thing. It's one, it's one piece of land owned by one group of people and it's really a group of ideas and a protocol. So privacy coin people have gone apeshit taken all the good ideas from Bitcoin and then added shit to it. So you got Zcash and then you got, people can, people can point shit out that's wrong to me, but I'm gonna call them Monero-like coins and uh, I'll go into why I call them not just Monero, but yeah. So Zcash and Monero are like, you also have Dash, so I know there's Dash people here, so I should fucking talk about Dash, you guys are gonna get angry. So, 
I'll talk about dash. What, ver, who, uh, is someone going to tell me that verge is a fucking privacy coin? I'll probably <laughs> argue with you, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you have it on there. Why not, right? So, Verge, Zcash, and Dash are all source code forks of Bitcoin. They took the exact same protocol, exact same source code, they just started a new network, and they added new source code on top of it. But like, they completely rely on Bitcoin protocol. Monero, Litecoin's totally different protocol. They use CryptoNote protocol here, CryptoNote. And Monero, there's at least two different to completely different implementations of CryptoNote. So there's like, there's coins that are forked from Monero and there's coins that were even older than Monero. Monero was not the first CryptoNote coin. So there's like 250 coins just in this circle. That's how fractally exploded the privacy coin world is, all right? Zcash, let's say there's 100 public blockchains that use Zcash protocol. Hush is one. Hush is one of just this protocol on top of this protocol on top of this protocol. So it's like privacy coins are a layer, a protocol on top of kind of maybe what you're familiar with, with just plain uh, transparent addresses. What's transparent? Um, so Bitcoin has transparent addresses. We call them transparent in the privacy coin world, they, they start with like a one or a three, and now they start with all this shit because people make stuff complicated. But in Zcash world, we have these same addresses, and then we also have these things called shielded addresses. Shielded addresses. There will be no quiz. I just like writing stuff down, so whatever. We call these Z adders because Zcash kind of invented them, and they're based on zero knowledge math. So that's kind of really why the Z is there. Zero knowledge math is this super, super cool field of math that started way back here in the 80s, I think. And Bitcoin did not use one bit of zero knowledge math because the it wasn't advanced enough and it was too slow and it wasn't like even implementable. So Satoshi just ignored it. Satoshi took really like basic hardened things that he knew would never be broken in his lifetime. So he, he chose SHA-256 because the fucking NSA invented it to be unbreakable. Why not use it, right? <laughs> they have $40 billion a year per budget. Why not take their shit? So Bitcoin's based on that stuff. And Zcash, like, kind of tweaked Bitcoin. It took a lot of its stuff. It forked an old version. It forked 0 0.112 back in the fucking Stone Ages. So Bitcoin's now on 0.20. You know, like, it's friggin' five years different. So they're very different code bases now. And there's lots of forks of Zcash. There's some people that fork the actual network. Hush did not. We, we mined our own Genesis block. Within like a month or two of Zcash starting. Zcash started in like 2016, and Hush did as well. We were one of the first three coins using Zcash protocol. So it was Zcash, Komodo, who has the sign KMD, and then uh, Z Classic. Zcash Classic fortune. And they basically. As you can tell, like, everyone likes to fork each other's shit in this world, right? Everyone takes each other's ideas. But, I don't know, I guess this talk I wanted to convey that there's all this cool privacy coins out there doing stuff. Now this just shows like a family tree a little bit, right? So Dash is more related to Zcash than Monero. You know, Verge is more related to Zcash than Monero. You know, it gives you at least some kind of intuitive sense of what's going on. I really focus on Zcash, although I, I study Monero. So I, I study and mine these coins, and I don't think Verge and Dash have good technology. You can argue with me if you'd like, but Verge was originally called Dogecoin Dark, and was a fucking joke on a joke coin. Okay, then they had good marketing, and then they changed it to Verge, and now they're still going, okay? <laughs> Dash has really good marketing, and they're still going, right? But it used to be dark coin. What's that? That used to be dark coin, yeah. 
originally called X coin. Oh yeah, that's right. Then that's called Dark Coin. Oh, yeah. Then some marketing was like Dash, you know, like so. Yeah, I don't know. That's the reason that Dash addresses start with X's because it was originally called X coin. Random fact, it's useless. <laughs> so yeah, what else? Um, I wouldn't even. I'm trying to think of other privacy coins. Oh, there is. There's um. There's Bean. Mimble, Wimble, I know this is weird shit. Mimble, Wimble, fucking, I'm not even joking you. And then, oh, this one, these are like all related. Mimble, Wimble is kind of the protocol, and then Beam and someone else that is, is competing with Beam. So these are like totally different actually. They're, they're not Bitcoin forks, they're not Dash forks, they're not Monero forks, they're not Zcash forks, they're not Verge forks. It's a whole new protocol. And it's got some interesting ideas and it kind of, it looks better than Bitcoin. Like an anonymous person essentially dropped the Mimblewimble protocol to Bitcoin core developers as, as an anon. They kind of were just like, hey, this is some cool shit. And the Bitcoin core developers were like, oh wow, this is actually fascinating. And they went and they studied it and they didn't like it and they just kind of left it and then people said we're going to build our own fucking coins on that shit obviously because there's money to be made and these people have millions of dollars in funding now and people have actually shown that some of the original bitcoin miners like people that mined 50 bitcoin blocks in the very beginning they donated money to these people and you can tell because it's like whoa, this is a block of 50 Bitcoins from the very beginning of time. And those people just fucking donated it to these people. So, I don't know. There's interesting, it's interesting because it's new and it's like different, but like, I still don't trust it more than, than Zcash. And if I had to choose between these two, I would say like, the math of Zcash is better, but the code and the wallets and the user interface and the like, forcing you to use privacy is better here. So there is no perfect world. But, you know, if you're only gonna use one coin for privacy, I don't even work on Monero coins, but I'll probably tell you to, you know, you should use Monero or, or what I work on, because I'm kind of, you know, I'm here talking about my own shit, obviously. So yeah, Hush is in here as well. I forgot to write Hush. So Hush directly competes with Monero and Zcash. I think we're way better than Zcash and like, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. It's kind of, it's like not even a sad because they won't turn on, they won't force you to use privacy. And Hush, we took, you know, we kind of followed them too closely for a few years, and now we're turning on forced privacy. So we're only, you can only use the shielded addresses starting in November. That's it. That's that. There's no more optional privacy. And then we basically are blowing Zcash out of the water because. They're all about making money. They're a company. They want to make money. And hush, we don't have any company, no foundation. We're a bunch of crypto coin, decentralized, you know, cypherpunks that want to make cool tech. So Zcash has a company in Switzerland, which owns a company in the United States, which uses a 501c3 US nonprofit to pay as little tax as possible so that the company can make money. And they don't care to turn on enforced privacy. And it's kind of a joke. They have like really awesome good tech. And then all these other forks kind of take it and use it. So Hush is not the only uh, Zcash fork with the enforced privacy. So Pirate was the first to do it. There's also this coin called Arrow and then Hush. Those are the three. These three privacy coins are like Monero for Zcash. We force people to use the shielded addresses, and that actually gives the whole chain privacy. On Zcash mainnet, like if you're just using Zcash on an exchange or whatever, they don't even support shielded addresses. You can't even use the privacy feature. So you're essentially not using Zcash. You're, you're just using Bitcoin. You know, every, almost 90% of exchanges that support Zcash, they do not support shielded addresses. So you're not actually using any privacy feature of Zcash when you use it there. You're basically just using Bitcoin. You have no privacy. All your data is there forever. Blah, blah, blah. Why are shielded addresses good? Let me go into that real quick. So shielded address means Alice pays Bob. 
let's say, five Bitcoin. In the Bitcoin world, Alice's address, Bob's address, and five are on the blockchain forever, right? It's there forever. Anyone 20 years in the future can go back, maybe the government, maybe your ex, maybe someone you don't like, whatever. So it's there forever. Shielded addresses means that Alice's address never shows up, Bob's address never shows up, and the five Bitcoin number never shows up. Essentially, instead, you have like hashes of hashes of hashes and all this fancy math makes it so you never store Alice's address on the blockchain, you never store Bob's, and you never store the amount that was transferred. That's it, I mean, I, uh, shielded addresses are pretty easy to understand, I think, in that respect. Like, they take away all that metadata leakage. They, they remove your address and the amount. And so when you look at a transaction that's shielded, it just looks like gobbledygook. It just, it's, it's, it's useless, essentially useless numbers that you know, blockchain analysis companies can try to spin their wheels on. But it's uh, Monero, you know, the same thing. So if you have a fully shielded transaction, if it's Z to Z, then you're essentially at the same privacy level roughly as Monero. Zcash people actually argue that it's higher because in Monero, you send a transaction and you mix in all these other people's stuff, and that makes it hard for people to see what's being spent and what's being received. It's kind of like your anonymity set is the people you mix in. So your anonymity set is like 10 or 20 or whatever. It's like a fixed number of other stuff, and it, the way I like to think of it is like, imagine you had to run across a field and someone was shooting at you. You'd want to like kick up some fucking dust or something and run through that dust field, you know? <laughs> you don't want to just mosey through there with a clear shot. So 10 to 20, it's like mixing in some little bit of dust around you, but maybe not enough. In the Zcash world, the anonymity set is the entire network. Like every time you make a transaction, no one can tell what you're mixing in and what you're not. So. I don't know. The whole Monero and Zcash world, they fight constantly, obviously. I like to be a middle ground. I, I mine and, and study and code stuff in both these worlds, but I'm deeper in this world and I study this world kind of for ideas. So I think Monero is way better than just playing Zcash because they force you to use privacy. All the exchanges have to use the privacy and like you actually have decent privacy of Monero. With Zcash, you have to make sure you're always using these addresses, and 99% of the wallets and exchanges don't support it, so it's like, that's dumb, right? And this is four years. They spend a million dollars a month on this. What the fuck are they doing for $1.1 million a month? I get I get a little frustrated. So, um, yeah, Hush is kind of the rebel kind of startup. We took the Zcash code really early on, four years ago, and we've just been kind of running with it and just kind of got a big community of random weirdos that work on it. So, I don't know. Does anyone have questions about privacy stuff? Like specific question, maybe of a coin or what stuff and things? I don't know, I've been ranting. Um, so I know there was an issue that you discovered last year with Zcash, um, some sort of vulnerability. Can you maybe update folks on what that was? And what has happened since then? Sure. Um, I don't even remember which one that was, but I found a few. Um, I have, so I have, there's these things called CVEs. Um, that's like when there's a big bug in program, like the government gives it a number and says like, this is CVE, blah, 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 blah. Now it has a number, it's important. So there's been a few CVEs for Zcash that, one was like, I discovered it, like they were trying to hide it. Okay, here's the, here's the good story. You know, Zcash was trying to hide the fact that there's a CVE that they fixed. And they, I'm like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm using their code in Hush, right? So I'm like, every time they push out new code, I'm just reading that code. What is this doing? What, mm, they, didn't, they didn't talk about that in their marketing yet. So just the normal thing I do, I'm reading their shit. 
And then I'm like, this looks really fucking bad, you know? Like, and I talk to other developers and they're like, this is really fucking bad. You know? So I wrote about it and I got the CVE identified. And then it turns out, you know, all these researchers were, were working on it and they had all these academic papers and they, they weren't happy that I scooped them. <laughs> they got really pissed off and they like, they made a preprint of their academic paper and, and quoted me and said this guy was first to publicly announce it, but they left me out of their official paper. So I, I think they were, were not so happy I kind of scooped them a bit. So Zcash isn't perfect, it always has bugs. Monero, same thing, but like, there was this bug where you could like find the IP address of people's shielded address. Like, if you know someone's shielded address, you can correlate that to the IP address, which is like, fuck, that should never be possible. So Monero is not immune, and those kind of bugs could happen. But Monero has like, it has some better isolation. Like Monero's wallet and its full node are actually separate. You can one, you can run like just a full node or just a wallet and not both. In Bitcoin world, that was never possible until like yesterday or something. And still no one uses it and it's not user friendly. And But like in Monero world, you can separate those things and that means that a bug in the wallet doesn't necessarily mean a bug in the full node and a bug in the full node doesn't necessarily mean a bug in the wallet. It's like isolated compartment class. So. Yeah, Zcash, like I found a few bugs. There's this website, I have a little website of like how much it would talk, how much it would cost per day to like de to denial of service Zcash. And it's like a few bucks a day. Because they're kind of dumb. And they made some choices for marketing reasons to, and I don't know. So like, uh, I'm kind of a thorn in Zcash's paw, I would say. They don't like dealing with me. Hush brings up a lot of dumb shit that they do. And also we we iterate faster than them. Like all the time people will send code to Zcash. Zcash employees or community members will send code to Zcash. And I'll merge it into Hush fucking months before Zcash fucking has it working. Because they want to talk about it and they want to talk about the variable names and the indentation and the fucking bullshit and we're like all about getting shit to work right now. So um, all the time, it's kind of like Hush has Zcash working for us. The entire Zcash operation, they're spending $1.1 million a month on fucking something. But code does come out and we use it all. And then we also take from all these other places. So Zcash is kind of like a upstream kind of like Linux and Ubuntu or kind of operate something like that so um, yeah average people like you probably want to use Monero like if you just had to use something right now that exchanges and stuff support you probably do want to use uh, a Mon like Monero like it, it does have pretty good privacy and especially if you use Monero and Tor together that's a uh, it's a pretty good combination blockchain analysis companies cry themselves to sleep and just turn off their computers when they find out that the thing that they're searching for has used Monero and Tor. They just, there's, there's all these talks and they, you can tell, they just, it's like they're scared. So, and they would be scared too, like not a lot of people use Touch, so they're like, you know, whatever, there's all these small privacy coins, but like, they're screwed. Like if they try to analyze the blockchains of Hush, Arrow, Pirate, coins that are fully shielded and there is no amounts and there is no addresses, there's very little data there for them to fucking de-anonymize you, take your privacy, steal your privacy. So, I don't know, like, watch out for Changely. I've also heard that do not use Monero and Changely together. I'm not saying never use Changely and I'm sure this will go on the internet, people have opinions, but XMR plus Changely equals bad. They will pause your shit and ask you for fucking documentation and whatnot. So just do not use Changely and Monero. I, Changely and other shit is fine, because they don't care. They know that they can blockchain and analyze, you know, Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin, but do not use Monero and Changely. It will, and all the Monero subreddits, this is like a sticky post at the top of like the Monero subreddit. Like I recently was just looking at stuff and so yeah, 
I don't know, if you're going to use Monero, which is probably good, don't use change the Monero because they are not friendly. They'll support it, they'll let you send it in, but don't, uh, don't trust them. So, um, and DEX is, I mean, there's decentralized exchanges, I'm not even going to go into which ones or what, you know, decentralized exchanges are the future and that's the opposite of a centralized exchange where it's like more peer-to-peer, -peer, like BitTorrent style. So, oh, come on, talk about Atomic DEX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, Atomic DEX doesn't support Z adders yet, but we have some kind of weird solution for it. So you can search the Google Play Store right now for Atomic DEX. It's in testing in the iTunes store, so I think you like have to be a beta tester or something still. But it's 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 in production on Google Play, Atomic Dex. It does support Hush, and fucking probably 200 different coins or something. But that's a way where you can like swap, let's say, Bitcoin Cash for Dash. You know, let's say like Alice wanted to trade, you know, 10 Dash for. 5 BCH, I have no idea what the exchange rates are. See, Alice and Bob wanted to swap or trade these two amounts. They decide what they want. So there is no like, there's not like an order book or an exchange that decides what the current price is. It's all about Alice and Bob. If Alice wants to sell right now, there's only one Bob to buy. Bob probably, you know, Alice and Bob figure it out. So Atomic Dex lets you do this. Even on your phone, you can swap and it's a it's pretty cool. It's it only supports like transparent addresses now. There is cool new shit now. There's no there's no GUIs released for it, but there is going to be a way to do pirate and hush swaps with Z addresses. And it's pretty crazy and brand new. But hold on, do you said it only supports transparent addresses? But if it supports hush, then hush doesn't have transparent. Hush has transparent addresses oh, it does. now. Until November. Until, until November. Yeah, until November. Uh, yeah. So Hush started in 2016, uh, just like Zcash, where we had optional privacy. We so Hush right now has the same network rules as Zcash, and we in why it's happening in November is that our block reward is having, mm -hmm. our block time is having, so we're making our coin a little faster, and then because we have to have everyone upgrade for those things, it's kind of a perfect time to throw in another consensus change which is no more transparent addresses. What happens to the transparent addresses that have You can balance? always send from. So this is a good point. So in the future you can always send from T to Z because why? All mining goes to a T address. It's a, it turns out to be a bad idea to mine to a Z address. It, it actually reduces the privacy of the Z address. Also you can't audit your supply. So you don't know if there's like you can also print money with Z addresses. Like if there's a bug in Z addresses, like if there's some horrible bug in Z addresses, there's no way to know that like if someone printed fucking new money. So that is the, that's the other thing. Bitcoin is like complete auditability. Like we need Bitcoin and it'll never go away. It's kind of like, I think of it for like buying and selling real estate and public transactions where you want everything to be public, right? Like, if you're buying a building as a business, you're buying real estate, like you want everything to be public and it to, to be verifiable and known. And then you can also audit the supply. So you'll know forever there's never gonna be more than 21 million. With privacy coins, I'm telling you right now, Monero probably has inflation bugs and more Monero has been printed than they're telling you. I can't fucking prove it. Nobody can prove it, all right? Zcash had that bug. They hid it for 11 months. Supposedly, no one ever used it, and there's no evidence of anyone ever using it because they no huge amounts of money just kind of came out of nowhere. But it's very scary. We call these inflation bugs. And inflation bug means you can print more money than should exist. So for Bitcoin, it would be like, if you could make 22 million Bitcoin exist, that would be a bad bug. That would be inflation bug. So. Why is it not so important with Hush? Well, Hush is, I, I didn't even get, I didn't even say this, but our, we're, our deal is all about private communications. Why is it called Hush? Well, we're, we're the Zcash protocol kind that cares about communication. So, like Zcash is purely about financial transactions, just like Bitcoin is purely about financial transactions. Hush 
what I did was like expand and make things better so you can store more data. So like you can store data in the hush chain, like small files or like metadata about other things, important keys or passwords. So uh, speak and transact freely is our little tagline. It's probably on the shirt somewhere, but yeah, so we're focused on calm. So it makes us make different decisions. Like I make different technical decisions because my goal is like having a chat interface, hush chat that uses our blockchain stuff. Whereas Zcash doesn't care about that. They don't. They don't want to do that. They really just want financial transactions. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of chaos on this board. Does anyone else have any specific questions? I have no idea how long I've been talking. Either. Where am I? Well, how do you get U.S. dollars into it? How do you get U.S. dollars into Bitcoin? Right there behind you. Yeah. <laughs> so those machines support that. I have no idea. Um, no, I, I'm being a bit snarky, but so you're saying, how do I turn US dollars into hush? I would say, um, well, Atomic Dex doesn't support fiat. This is purely crypto coins. This has 200 different crypto coins, right. but there's no fiat on ramp at all. But there's, you can turn your fiat into something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, it actually does, like, it, this does have, like, uh, Tether and USDT and that, all those fucking. I hate stable coins. Don't even get me started on stable coins. So, but I know that stable coins are have a use case. So, um, there's no good answer to your question. There's no easy way to turn U.S. dollars into hush. Mm. Totally, you have to find someone that wants to sell, or there's various uh, exchanges. I, I'm not sure which of the exchanges have um, like fiat stuff, but well, Gemini has. Fiat. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Hush isn't on Gemini. So, okay. like, just as an example, just to get on a shitty exchange you've never heard of is like, sometimes they'll be like, 10 Bitcoin, you know, like, mm. to get on our exchange that no one's ever heard of. I have no idea how much it would cost to get on Gemini. Also, you have to go through massive uh, bureaucracy, paperwork, KYC, New York bit license, like, Hush wants nothing to do with any of that stuff. Like we're we're privacy coin tech. Uh, we know it sucks to get from fiat into any privacy coin, and um, it is possible that the Bitcoin ATMs can support Hush. None, there aren't any right now that do. But like the general bytes ATMs that are floating around, those make it easy to add your own coins. So. There is possibility there to put one in, a, to make an ATM support hush. Uh, I, I definitely am interested in that. So if there's ATM owners that want to add random coins to their ATM. Yeah. Um, so the best way to get hush from US dollars would be to get a non-KYC ATM that you put money into, get your Bitcoin, make an account on Cytex, which supports Z addresses, which is also a non-KYC exchange, and they support Hush with Z addresses, so then you'd have no traceability um, to getting Hush. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cytex uh, is an exchange, and we also are on Graviex, but they don't support our friggin' Z addresses. So, it's it's interesting, a lot of, a lot of exchanges don't even want to support shield addresses because they want to know everything about you and it goes against their potentially their you know whatever regulations are happening in their country it's very hard to even keep track of the regulations in one country and then like as a developer of software it's like I'm just writing code and people are using it in 200 countries in the world how, how can I ever know you know so I'm like I write code and I try to you know at some point say that people are going to use it for however they're going to use it and I hope it's good and better and stuff but yeah getting US dollars also you you know finding someone at this meeting or one of the crypto coin meetings that has hush and wants to sell it for Bitcoin cash or Bitcoin or US dollars or whatever that's that's also another way so it is uh, it is another way is mining it I'll tell you I mean Here's the thing about mining. 
some people will tell you that New Hampshire or many places don't have cheap electricity, so why are you wasting your time mining? I see mining as, as a great way to buy and trade electricity for crypto coins. So mining is really a way to trade electricity for crypto coins. Turns out, anyone will sell you electricity. There's no KYC for electricity, right? Turns out, one of the best ways to mine hush, to buy hush is to mine. You don't even have to own the equipment. I don't use this and I don't do it, but there is a website called NiceHash, and you can just rent hash power. Yeah, they, so miners, like it's essentially like a folding at home or like SETI at home for miners. You sell your, your miner to this website, and then this website rents it out to people by the minute. And so let's say you wanted to buy a lot of hush. You could put, they, I think it's only Bitcoin that they take, maybe other currencies, I don't know. But it would be a way to trade Bitcoin for hush, but avoiding an exchange, because you're just, you're mining it. Fuck it. So, all these KYC bullshit laws, they're bullshit laws, you know? So, there's various ways that you can s circumvent the brokenness. Mining is a way to do that. So, if you don't mine, you have to own the hardware, and you can buy cheap, you know, little ASICs for hush that are very cheap or very expensive. There's, that stuff starts to get expensive, so, Renting the hash power, if you just want to buy a bit, rent the hash power, if you're like, you know, you want to go long term. Your miner can also mine other things. So if you buy a miner that mines hush, you can also mine Zcash, you can also mine KMD, and you can also mine Zen. I forgot to mention Zen, I'm sorry. Uh, so the same miners will work on hush, Zcash, Zen, Komodo, a few other small ones. But you're just to say you're not locked in, it's like, you're not buying a device that only mines this one weird currency. There's, it mines various things. So, but yeah, there's, there's various ways. None of them are easy or intuitive. You know, a little bit, <laughs> just like all crypto coins. None of them. Uh, but you know, that's kind of what the world has caused is that they're trying to make it hard for you to get the thing you want. You know, privacy, a little bit of financial technology that you don't have to lick someone's boot to use. So, yeah. um, I have no idea what time we're at. Where, where are we? Wherever. Okay. Um, can you go over the Hush wallet options? What's out there? Because I know there's Silent Dragon Light and yeah. Silent Dragon. Yeah. And then Atomic Dex, I guess, technically. All right. It's, it's all over the place. Atomic Dex is a mobile wallet. And that will work until November, but then we're going to fucking turn off fucking the addresses. So I don't know. Berg, what should we say? <laughs> Silent Dragon is the main GUI wallet for Hush. Silent Dragon, it's a, uh, I don't know. It's QT wallet. It has no web technologies in it. Fuck, fuck the web when it comes to your wallet. JavaScript is not safe enough to store your money in. Anyone that tells you you should trust a website or a web browser or a plug-in to a web browser. It's probably an Ethereum person and they just kind of wave their hands at security. I don't play that game, so like, there's no web tech in this. It's C++, it's a native app, and it's not using fucking JavaScript at all in any manner. Um, and it, this is a full node, so we have Sound Dragon and we have a light version. Most people probably want to use the light version just because it's like, just takes a few minutes, it's fully done, blah, 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 yay. I think that the Silent Dragon light is a good intro if you just want to like five minutes and test it out. The Silent Dragon is like the full node, so it's going to have to download two, three gigs, probably three, four gigs, yeah. So, and we have one of the smallest, you know, Zcash is like 40 gigs, you know, like we're, we're still at like three or four gigs, but um, it's a pain in the ass for most people. So Silent Dragon Lite is probably the one you want to use for the desktop. Um, I didn't even write myhush.org, but that's our website. I'm, I'm bad at marketing. That's why we have a marketing person. I'm not him. <laughs> I try. 
Um, so Silent Dragon, Silent Dragon Lite, those are the two desktop wallets. Um, if you have like 32-bit Windows, Silent Dragon Lite is your only option. No Zcash coin will work on 32-bit Windows except for Lite wallets. So if that's your dealio, then you have to use that, but otherwise you can choose either one. Um, and just like cool stuff, like we also have an Android app. So there is a Silent Dragon Android in the in the Google Play Store. It's I think you have to search for Silent Dragon or something. It's called Silent Dragon Android. I know it's a weird name for an Android app. Does that use the seed words from Silent Dragon Life? Because I noticed today I was installing Silent Dragon. And I had Silent Dragon Lite. Silent Dragon doesn't accept the keywords from Silent Dragon Lite. Silent Dragon Android is actually not its own thing, and all it does is connect to one of these two. So oh, just like a front end? it's a front. It's just a front end. We call it a remote control. So what it is is an Android app that when you open it, all it does is ask you to to scan a QR code, and one of these two wallets will give you a QR code, and then your Android app is actually talking to your wallet. So I got to have another computer running that online. And right now you do. And in the in the future soon we're going to have it so that that you can have fully light mode in the Android app so that on so that you're fully kind of just open an Android app and then you could like make stuff. Here's the deal. I this I designed it this way originally because I don't really trust having a wallet that like that and all your money on fucking Android phone. Android phones are fucking really like any app can do shady shit behind the back. And you know, you, you don't want like some random app you downloaded three weeks ago to like steal all your money, right? Like in your wallet that that. So I was like concerned about that. And so the way it worked originally was that it connects to the full node and like really there's there's no wallet like that stored on your phone. It's just it's it's here and you have to like interact with a GUI to really do anything. You can't just steal someone's private keys or wallet right off the phone. But we're finding out that just people really want to just, first of all, we're finding a lot of people in like Southeast Asia and stuff, like they literally don't have a desktop. They want to use, yeah, a lot of people have phones. just a lot of people just only have an Android phone. And multiple people all around the world were like, my computer's broken, I don't even have a desktop. And I'm like, wow, okay, so th there's a real use case. And yeah, we're gonna make it so you can do pure light mode on the Android app, and just basically warn people like, hey, don't store large amounts, like you really wanna use the full node or connect to your desktop, just, but we can tell people like, hey, this is for small amounts, don't do anything crazy, and you know, what do you got there? Hustroid. Oh, the Hustroid, yeah. So let me talk about a little shit here. We've got a Hustroid project. What the fuck is a Hustroid? So, Oh shit, what the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> no, it's like, your, your phone's loading a different operating system. I was like, am I expecting that? I'm not sure. Um, Hushdroid, what the fuck is that? So we got a lot of crazy projects and, oh here, Graphene OS, cool. Mm -hmm. So, we are building this phone, building a phone, you know, where we're taking a really cool operating system called Graphene OS. So Graphene, is a fork of Android from somebody that used to work at Google on Android. So this is like kind of from the horse's mouth shit. This is not like, oh, la la la, I'm gonna take Google's code and I'm 16 years old and fucking whatever, you know, like, nah. -uh. This is like, this guy is a hundred times fucking smarter than me, the guy that writes Graphene OS, right? So what's Hush doing? We're taking that OS, we put it on this fucking phone, we can pre-install some of our own apps on here, and then sell it to people because it's a, it's a kind of a pain in the ass to, to get this operating system on, on the phone. You kind of need a little bit of command line access, so we uh, give a total DIY way to do it. So like, I'm gonna write a URL here, I'm sorry. GitHub.com slash myhush Hushdroid. If you go there, there's full docs on how to do it yourself. Now, we obviously realize that a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that. So, but we're showing people like we're not trying to get you to trust us. You know, like we're not trying to steal your money. Like we're trying to give someone a phone that has some privacy 
and it it doesn't even look very different than a, than an Android phone. I don't know if you want to just there's nothing on it. If you want to, there's no dick pics or anything on it. I promise. <laughs> just install it. <laughs> it just looks like an Android phone, um, but it has it's completely de-googled. There's no right. Google in that. Okay, mm -hmm. so. You have no idea how many hundreds and thousands of libraries that phone home to Google on every press of every button. You don't even have to submit it to another website. But if you like type fuck and press delete, oh, you bet those fucking letters were sent to Google servers and stored forever, right? So what this is, is it completely removes Google at a very low level, okay? Also, it lets you relock the phone. So like, there's, there's other competing things that do this. Lineage OS is another one. Lineage will support any random old phone, okay? That's cool, but any old random Android doesn't have privacy features like these brand new Google phones. So the Hush Droid is built on the Pixel 3 series. And that's for a very specific reason, is that graphene only supports Pixel 3. It's kind of crazy, but it's because it's new enough and it has these trust features where inside the hardware it knows if you fucked with the phone. So basically what I do is I flash graphene onto the hardware, mm -hmm. install you know all our shit, whatever, and then I can like relock the bootloader. So you have to buy a phone directly from Google as well. You cannot buy a carrier locked phone. So all the details and all the shit, you know. Everyone can do it themselves, right? So that's why it's like, if you want to do it yourself, fuck it, do it yourself. We want to try to sell phones to people that, for people that aren't going to do it themselves. And hush. We need to have like a secure Android phone to, to be able to trust to run our Android shit. Like I don't want to tell people to use an Android phone and use put all their hush on there and it's like some random apps from fucking God knows where, malware. So this gives us a way to tell people kind of a best practice, like here is the best kind of thing that you can do. And um, other, lots of other really smart people are, are kind of doing stuff like this. And uh, you know, I'm not the only one, we're not the only ones with this idea, but the Hush Droid is kind of like our own custom phone that is going to be customized with our shit, have our, some of our apps, and, you know, put Bitcoin apps on there too, kind of so build the, vet. We, you know. So what was the difference between, so Graphene OS is what you guys are basing Hushdroid on, and what you're doing differently from them is... We're using them. We're, essentially, we're replacing plain Android that talks to Google every second with Graphene OS, kind of as our base layer. But we're not like hacking it up or changing anything at a very deep level here. We're just... So you're just adding your own apps to the yes. operating system, basically? Yep. Okay. And, and you said it's Graphene OS that's Pixel 3 specific? Yes. Yeah. Yep. It only works... Well, it works on some of the other Pixel phones. I was going to say, what about 3A? I just well, yes, I, I bet... It works on a 3A. It'll work on a 3, 3A, and, an X, and the 3A XL. So okay. like 3, 3A, yeah. But like, for instance, it will not work on Pixel 4s yet. Pixel 4s are so new, that they kind of haven't even had the time to, to do that. So Pixel 3s though are pretty cheap. You can get them for like three, 400 bucks right now and, and actually have privacy. And why is this interesting? I really dislike all this fucking contact tracing Bluetooth shit that's coming out, okay? Mm. SIM tracking, GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi identifiers. So it's getting really bad. <coughs> and this Hushdroid phone, we recommend that you never put a SIM card in it. Okay, so it's kind of a lol, it's a phone, but don't put a fucking SIM card in it because then you lose all your privacy. So it's like, this, oh, it's, phone call. it's meant to be your second phone. It's your, sm it's your <laughs> smart burner phone, all right? Okay. So you're supposed to have your regular phone, talks to Google all the time, and you can talk to fucking mom and grandma, but then that phone, you connect via Wi-Fi to maybe, te you know, give a Wi-Fi from this phone or just connect to whatever the local Wi-Fi is. Then... There's no GPS tracking, there's no SIM tracking, there's no cell tower pings, there's no fucking code that you don't control that's from the phone company running. So it's a whole layer of location privacy. That, that phone, if you use it, you have to specifically start giving up your metadata 
via your own actions instead of the phone kind of snitching on you constantly. So it, it just gives you a base layer. You can still click stupid things and you know click on malware links on it and then it's all lost, right? But, but it gives you a base layer that's not spying on you. And that's kind of cool and so he's also done immense work like there's a huge amount of security hardening like for infosec kind of security people there's like a huge amount of kind of the guy that works on it is a security you know, he worked on android security so he kind of is doing the stuff that they didn't get to let him to do or something so it's cool, cool what technology. if i did put an e sim what if i did put a sim in my you uh, totally graphic. couldn't it just it just reduces the uh, privacy because then you're trackable. Obviously. You're much more trackable from the cell phone company, but you can. Of but course all the can. nasty Google guts have been ripped out of Correct. the program. It's still better. It's still way better to use the hush droid with a SIM. It's just that like the maximum security you could get is to not put a SIM in, I guess. Right. But yeah. Or see, it's funny. In other countries, you could go buy a SIM for cash with no KYC. That's the norm in a lot of countries, in Thailand, and a lot of Asia. But here, it's like, it's friggin' locked down. You can't easily rotate sims and buy random sims. But I hear people do that in certain places, but um, I just kind of avoid the cell phone network. I don't assume that there's any fucking privacy there. So, um, yeah, we do lots of weird stuff. Uh, we have this 3D model printed by this cool guy that he makes like Bitcoin full node enclosures to kind of like do weird stuff. So this is like our silent dragon. This is uh, our dragon. I don't know if you want to look at it. Oh, shit. So, it's like a Raspberry Pi Yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi case essentially. So we are compatible with all that stuff. You can run full nodes on Raspberry Pis and we have our little weird enclosures. Um, what else? Does anyone have questions about privacy phones or other? Things. Well, hopefully people learn at least one thing. That's all I hope for. Let me know when this fucking video is over. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.